Today, I'd like to give you just a few tips about how to approach surgery and some guidance for surgical closure if you have one of the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes or hypermobility spectrum disorders. Hi, I'm Dr. Claire Francomano, and this is my YouTube channel where we talk about all things related to the Ehlers-Danlos syndromes and hypermobility spectrum disorders. Wound healing can be a problem for people with EDS and HSD, and for this reason, there are a few guidelines that I usually recommend to people to try to enhance the chances of a really successful wound closure after surgery. In general, it's a good idea to use a double layer closure in order to put in two layers of stitches. And the stitches should be placed a little bit more closely together than they might be ordinarily, but not pull tighter because pulling those stitches tighter will put extra stress on the skin and may cause it to tear. We want to leave the stitches in a little bit longer than they might be left ordinarily, maybe up to one and a half times as long as usual. And if the patient is able to tolerate skin glue, this is a good choice to help hold that skin together at the edges of the incision. If it's possible, I would avoid staples because those do put a lot of stress on the skin and can cause skin to tear. It's a good idea to use Steri strips after the sutures are removed that will hold the edges of the wound together and give a little bit more time to keep that wound healing going. And finally, for a lot of people with EDS and HSD who have mast cell issues, Coban is a good option instead of tape or adhesive to hold the wound dressing in place. So that's a brief list of some strategies that you can use to improve the chances of wound healing after surgery for people with EDS and HSD.